Hi, today I want to tell you how you can create drama and depth in your images like this using simple things called grids. They're simple little things that pop on the front of a light and consist of a honeycomb or similar pattern and they channel down the spread of the light. They're often made of metal when they're attached to larger flash heads, but they can also be fabric when used with soft boxes, in which case they're more commonly known as egg boxes. What grids don't do is make the light you're using harder. Without getting too much into the physics of things, because that's for another video, the only thing that can really make a light harder or softer is the size of the light source in relation to the subject. All grids do is channel down where that light is falling. They usually come in different degrees, which refers to the angle of light they'll throw once they're attached. The smaller the holes, the tighter the beam. You can see how adding different grids to this Pro Photo head simply tightens down the beam of light. Doesn't actually make it harder or softer, just controls where it falls. A very important thing to remember with grids is that they eat up light. Now, like a lot of people, I wasn't ever actually sat down and formally taught lighting. I learned almost everything on the job in a very bit by bit, disorganized kind of way. And one of the things that I found so counterintuitive is that when you use grids, which focus down the lighting, there's an instinctive feeling that that should make the light more intense and increase the quantity of it. Time after time after time, I would add a grid to a light in shot and then wonder why that light now wasn't showing up on my image. And of course, the simple reason is, is that adding a grid actually blocks out some of the light that's getting to your subject. Let me try and explain this using this incredibly helpful diagram uh, and also demonstrate to you why I'm a photographer, not any other sort of graphic artist. You can see here our light source, there it is, and there's the beams of light emanating from it in perfectly, perfectly straight lines, as light always does, of course, and the light is spreading out from the light source in all sorts of different directions. As we add the grid, the various little parts of the grid, the little bits of the honeycomb pattern or whatever patterns in place, will block certain beams of light from emanating. So we are blocking the total amount of light that's leaving the light source, but also directing those beams and channeling down the light that emanates from this light source. And that's how grids work. In studio situations like I'm creating this shot in, the loss of power of matting grids isn't really that big a deal. I've got nothing but studio flash equipment here. I've got a very wide variation of power outputs I can choose from, so it's pretty easy to get around this problem. Don't forget it happens though, because you might be in situations where the power output of the lights you've got with you are not that great in relation to other lights you're having to use, say using a flash gun against the midday sun, and you can't escape the basic physics of putting a grid on something eats up the quantity of light. Okay, let's go into the studio and look at grids in practice. Now since grids allow us to control where the light is falling, that allows us to light areas of the shot separately. We've got a grid on a beauty dish which is lighting Christina's face and upper body. We've then got egg boxes on two strip soft boxes, one of which is low down and in front of Christina and the other is slightly higher up and behind aiming back over her shoulder. Then on our fourth light, we've got a grid on a flasher that's aiming onto a spot on the back wall behind Christina, creating that spotlight effect. To see just how marked an effect they have, compare the shot we're working on with a shot I took earlier in the day in exactly the same studio, although obviously for a different client. Rather than a big wash of light, which fills the whole studio, each light is lighting just one specific area and not affecting other parts of the shot. Now obviously, this effect is exactly what I want, but of course every silver lining has a cloud. The one thing to be very very careful of when using grids is how precise the fall of light is. You may find that you're not actually lighting the part of your shot that you wanted to. I'd strongly suggest if you've got them that you use modelling lights on your flashes so you can see what effect the light is having, or take lots of test shots, or if your subject is human, get your subject to tell you by looking back at the light where the light is falling. The other thing you've got to bear in mind is that the precise nature of this lighting means that your subject probably can't move very much without dramatically changing how the shot looks. The reason I used such soft directionless light for this morning shoot was to give this Golf Pro lots of room to move around and a very large sweet spot in which she could stand and still be perfectly lit. 
By comparison, if Christina were to move even a few inches either way, the effect on her would be quite dramatic as the light would no longer be lighting the right areas of the shot. So to recap, the grids and the light are controlling where the light falls. We're taking great care over the power output as they're consuming some of the power as well. We're very precise and careful about where we place and angle the lights and make sure that Christina doesn't move very much. And altogether, this allows us to create an image with a decent amount of drama in it and a wide range of tones from highlight to shadow across the frame. Now, the other things going on in this shot are that we've got gels on two of the lights, the two strip softboxes. Gels are a subject for another time, but in the context of what we've just been talking about, they do add some colour, but they also suck up more light. So there's the power output to bear in mind again. There's also a lot of inverse square at work in this shot and some very delicate feathering of the light going on as well. All of that I'll cover in some other videos so as not to overwhelm you too much. There you go, a whistle stop tour as to how to use grids when lighting. If you've got any questions, stick them in the comments below, like or subscribe if you see fit. And if you want much more in-depth info about how to light, I've got an entire course devoted to lighting at photosmudger.teachable.com or click on the link below.